Hello everyone, if you saw my last video I show you how to create a split membrane keyboard. For those who haven't seen yet, I left the link here. And right now I have a craving for this type of keyboards, but this time with mechanical keys. I've been doing a research about this type of keyboards and I found this one that is called Ergodox. All of their kits are programmable and it has programmable RGB lights. Its price is $354. There is a new Ergodox version named Moonlander. The thumb kits are changed. And these keys and also the grid support can be bent in any position. This helps with ergonomic and the hand sizes. And the price is $365. Another keyboard that I found in my research is the Korn. I think is the most popular one. This type of keyboard must be assembled by yourself. You can buy a kit with all of the parts or you can buy it separately. You can buy the keys, the LEDs, the OLEDs, the cables, the keycaps and then soldering all in a PCB. You can program each one of the keys as you want. I didn't calculate the price of this keyboard because all the parts can vary its prices in each of the pages. The last one that I found is the ductile manuform. This can be built without a PCV. Although you can buy PCV for each key, so the installation could be more easy. The expensive part of this keyboard is the 3D printed case, but if you have a 3D printer, you can print it yourself. This is the one that I like it most and I decided to make one. The first thing that I had to do is to find the list of materials the 3D model case, the two microcontrollers, 46 diodes 1A, 41, 48, 46 mechanical switches. For this exist several brands. The cheaper ones was the Gateron. 46 keycaps. You can buy each key for separately or you can buy a kit with all of the keys. The difference is the price. If you buy each key by separately, you can choose by any color, any type of key. And also you can find blank keys. The key gives you 106 keys with different key sizes as a normal keyboard. The 3D printing of the case took me 12 hours each one. And I also lose two left cases because I have an issue with my 3D printer and these cases were 90% printed. After I printed the cases, I cleaned it up to have a smoother surfaces. The next step that I had to do was to remove all the support filament with the help of a tweezers. And finally, I have the first half cleaned. And here we have the two pieces cleaned and they look very nice. Now I will install the switches. First of all, I'm going to order all the switches. As a best practice to have a clean solder, I like to clean each of the pins of each switch. I'm going to use this color blade to clean each one of these. I'm going to use solder paste so the solder lid can adhere easily. I'm going to apply this solder paste to each of the pins of each switch. Now I'm going to melt a little piece of solder lid to each of the pins. So it's gonna be easier when I'm going to solder the cables and the diodes. And now it's time for one of the best steps, putting all the switches in the case. You have to press a little to have the switch in its position. Please be careful in this step because you can damage the case. The switch have a little hole for the RGB LEDs. 
In my case, I put this hole facing up the case. I'm going to separate the diodes from its strip. And I'm going to clean each pin with the help of a razor blade to remove glue residue. The next step is bend the anode pin. You can distinguish the sides. The cathode is the black side and the anode is the red one. After I bend it, I'm going to cut it. This side will be soldered to the switches. I'm going to solder the diode with the help of the solder paste. I just put the diode near to the switch and then apply a little of heat with the soldering iron and then the diode is in its place. In this page are the wiring diagrams for the rows and columns. This page shows a wiring diagram for a 5x6 keyboard. Our keyboard is 4x5, so please be careful to eliminate just one of the columns. Also, take into account that the right and left sides are inverted. I recommend start by the left side and then do a mirror of the wiring to the right side. For the columns, I use a copper wire. I just bend it a little higher than the diodes. This is to avoid any contact with the diodes. And now I'm going to take out of the back the Pro Micro microcontrollers. This microcontroller is very small and very cheap. And each half is going to take one of these microcontrollers. The microcontroller is going to be put in this space of the case. This microcontroller came with pins. You can use it if you want to use connectors with these microcontrollers. But in my case, I don't have these connectors, so I'm going to solve the cables directly. I'm going to use a ribbon cable to connect the rows and columns. And I'm going to solder the columns and rows to the microcontroller using the diagrams in the page. If you had a third hand, you can solder very easily. And cut the excess of the cable. I decided to solder the cable that is going to join the two halves directly to the microcontrollers. I'm going to use an all USB cable, but I only need three lines of this cable. One is for VCC, one is for GND, and the last one is for the data. I'm going to use a zip strip to fix the cable inside of the case. To have everything in its position, I'm going to glue them with hot glue. This is the final result. 
Now it's time for the best part of the assemble. It's to put all of the keycaps. I bought in AliExpress a kit of 106 keycaps. I bought this kit because I think it's cheaper than buy each keycap alone. I'm going to put each keycap in its position, take into account that its position depends on how I'm going to program my keyboard. For the thumb keys, I'm going to use any key. I'm not going to stress myself thinking in what key I have to use here. After I read the documentation, I learned that I have to separate the two halves to be able to program them. The good thing is that I had these stereo connectors and I'm going to use it to create the cable to connect the two halves. Also, I need a couple of small switches to program the devices and I will need a small hole in the cases. I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol to remove the hot glue. This is a little trick that I learned years ago. After I remove the hot glue, I open a little hole in the case to put the stereo connector. And also, I use a little piece of ribbon cable to connect the reset switch. I use a stereo cable to create the cable that is going to join the two halves and I'm going to create a curly cable. I'm going to hold the micro switch with my finger while I apply some hot glue in it. I have to be careful not to burn my finger. To make the curly cable, I roll up the cable in a tube and then apply a little heat with a hair dryer. To be able to access the USB connector of each microcontroller, I bought these little adapters and I'm going to join them with a little piece of USB cable. These are very cheaper connectors and I'm going to use some old USB cables. And this is our new USB extension. This is the final result. As you can see, there is the stereo connector and the USB connector. I 3D printed the bases in an orange color and I put a little piece of foam and they look very nice. This is the final result of the cases with the base. As you can see, the foam helps to avoid the slide of the keyboard. And finally, this is our new keyboard. This is our curly cable that I'm going to connect each of the halves. First, I'm going to put it in the left half and then I'm going to put it in the left one, in the right one, sorry. And this is how our new keyboard is going to work. As you can see, here is the micro switch to do the reset of the microcontroller. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to program this keyboard. I hope you liked the video. Please leave me a like and subscribe.